Hey everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a ride on the eerie side with some incredible stories from train drivers. They're sharing the creepiest and strangest things they've encountered right on the tracks. Make sure to subscribe and buckle up, because this journey is about to get a little weird. Trains are really unpredictable. Even in the middle of a forest, two rails can appear out of nowhere, and a 1.5 mile fully loaded coal drag heading east out of the low sulfur mines of the PRB will be right on your ass the next moment. I was doing laundry in my basement, and I tripped over a metal bar that wasn't there the moment before. I looked down. Rail? WTF? And then I saw concrete sleepers underneath and heard the rumbling. Deafening railroad horn. I dumped my wife's pants, unfolded, and dug behind the water heater. It was a double-stacked Z train, headed east towards the fast single track of the BNSF Emporia sub, Flint Hills. Majestic as hell, 75 miles per hour, 6 units, distributed power, 4 ES44 DCs pulling and 2-9s pushing, all in run 8. The whole house smelled like diesel for a couple of hours. The fact is, there is no way to discern which path a train will take, so you really have to be watchful. If only there were some way of knowing the routes trains travel, maybe some sort of marks on the ground, like twin iron bars running along the paths trains take. You could look for trains when you encounter the iron bars on the ground and avoid these sorts of collisions. But such a measure would be extremely expensive. And how would one enforce a rule keeping the trains on those paths? A big hole in homeland security is railway engineer screening and hijacking prevention. There is nothing to stop a rogue engineer, or an ISIS terrorist, from driving a train into the Pentagon, the White House, or the Statue of Liberty, and our government has done fuck all to prevent it. Not a train driver, but this comes from my father, who was a fitter in British rail steam days. The NHS, BTW, if not obvious, this is from the UK, put a mental hospital right next to the West Coast main line and decided to build a tranquil garden across the tracks and put a bridge over the four-track wide main line, common sense was lacking. Well, one day a body was found with no head, so all sheds were asked to inspect locos that had been down the line that day. My father was on the footplate of a steam engine and was asked to lower the water scoop to check. The next thing my dad heard was the fitter fall over and not get up, so he rushed down and rendered first aid. When he looked up, he got the shock of his life as there was the man's head grinning back at him, my dad explicitly says grinning, with eyes wide open. That was the closet my dad ever came to literally shitting himself. Oh yay, I can finally answer. So where do I begin? I used to have paintball fights with kids in a remote banjo playing town. There was this guy we called air hose. The story behind that is that the air hose that connects the train cars together is long, thick, and black if you catch where this is going. Anyway, one day we were about two hours outside of the home terminal and a good old air hose was sitting on the main line because he was dead, you can't work longer than 12 hours on duty and you go dead. We came boot scooting around him because I got a hot date with my bed so I could meet up with this nurse at 4am anyhow, we go hauling asses beside them, and we see a light pointed to the sky at about a 45 degree angle. We are both like, WTF? And we turn on the lights just as we pass by, and thus we get to see why his name is Airhose. We radioed to him after we got by and said, looks like your Airhose has got a leak there. 4,685 must be some water or something, so naturally everyone in 50 miles heard us, and the poor dude who wanted to piss out the side of his engine is nicknamed Airhose. I have seen mountain lions in places where game wardens refuse to admit they are. We would do all sorts of crazy shit to each other out there too. There was a time when I was firing, leering to control the beasts we call trains, and we were trying to make a quick trip. It was like 6am and it took about 6 hours on a good day to get home. The yard crew was slow dicking everything, and we got the green light to head out, but they wanted to pull out ahead of us so they could shove back and build a train. So it was a race, we beat them, and old boy was pissed and said some shit over the radio, calling us cocksuckers or something, but all three of us in the cab had already had a slight disagreement that morning anyway. So we slapped that bitch to a full stop and got in a shouting match about to hop off the engine and beat that dude's ass. He didn't want that smoke, though, so he jumped in his truck and gave us the finger. I've also hit a cow and driven another 200 miles with its head sitting like a hood ornament on the engine. That thing exploded, it was awesome but disgusting at the same time. My dad was an engineer for UP, Illinois Central, and Mopac for 38 years. He's hit three people crossing the tracks, the last one really messed him up because he made eye contact with the lady right before he smoked her. This was at a rural crossing, and she could see the train coming the whole time. He thinks it was a suicide. 
he almost killed a kid driving a tractor with a fertilizer trailer when he hit the trailer at a rural crossing. The conductor threw the switch under the engine while they were doing yard work and derailed the engine. He was coming out of the yard in East St. Louis, and one of his cars derailed and tipped half the train. My grandpa was killed in a train accident in Pana, Illinois, when he hit a gravel truck, also an engineer, in the 80s, and my dad had a shit ton of near misses at that crossing. When he first started on the railroad at 18, he had a dude lay across the tracks when he was a conductor. He said when you hit deer, they explode. Once, a dude was walking his dog off a leash near the tracks. The dog panicked and started running down the middle of the tracks. They basically ran the dog down and watched as this dude went back and forth, almost jumping on the tracks, trying to save his dog, almost killing himself. They had some guys from the Canadian Pacific fill in, and apparently up north, if you hit a moose, it can come in the cab of the engine and kill you. I don't drive trains, but I'm a track maintainer, so I'm often on track, and we work closely with the train crews. That being said, most of my action happens in the city, where we have a yard next to the Love Tunnel. Besides used needles and condoms, this tunnel has given us a bunch of goodies. Two men, dressed as what aliens might think women look like, were just reaming each other. Like, legit, 20 pumps and switch kind of deal. At least they weren't selfish lovers. A heroin hang where the peeps had an old ass cassette player. They just kept playing You Sang To Me by Mark Anthony, rewinding it, and playing it again. A dead guy is surrounded by a veritable pharmacy of pills. Various women of the night. And, when we showed up at night once, a seriously looking drug deal was right in the middle of our yard. The dudes had set up a piece of plywood near our scrap yard as a table, used old ties for chairs, and had a fucking freezer ziplock of some powder on the table. We watched from our truck, but they didn't seem like the kind of fellas you politely asked to leave. They conducted their business in an orderly fashion and walked off towards the tunnel. Kudos to them. I love that yard. I always feel like one of the kids from Stand By Me when I go there. I am not a train driver but a former Wendy's employee who needs to share my story. Closing up at 11 PM, a coworker goes out for a smoke and comes back freaking out. There was a naked homeless guy laying in the middle of the track next to the store, jacking off and screaming like he was in pain. This track is often used as it runs straight through town. Anyone heard of Ottawa, Illinois? So we called the cops, and he was completely unresponsive to them. Still screaming and jerking, the guy's completely paralyzed, all over stiff as a board. They called paramedics, and they put him on a stretcher. He was still locked up, jacking and screaming. It turns out the dude was like a human crack rock, and that's what he was. I work on the railways in the UK, mainly in the northwest of England, and I've seen some strange shit. The first would be years ago, doing some work near Liverpool, when I got a shout from a friend to come and have a look at a fake skull that someone had thrown over the wall. It turns out it was the real skull of a man who had escaped the psychiatric ward of the nearby hospital 10 years before. Second, doing some devegetation work in a place called Parbold, cutting everything back to the boundary fence, which is then supposed to lead on to unowned or council-owned woodland. We cleared a big section of bramble and hawthorn to the fence, and then through it we could see another mesh fence, about 25 meters long, but it also had a mesh roof, like a cage. Interested, I jumped over to have a look and found it was in fact a giant cage somebody had built, and it had four or five dog cages inside. The place looked like it hadn't been used in a while as it was heavily overgrown, and I know it doesn't sound too strange, but on top or next to every dog cage was a pile of clothes, including shoes, and other things that made it obvious the cages weren't used for dogs. I felt quite uneasy being there, so we finished the job, went home, and never went back. Third, I found an old safe that looked as though someone had thrown off a bridge. I got the disc cutter on it to crack it open, and guess what we found? Dildos and vibrators there are about 15 of them. Weird. Fourth, de veg work again at Poulton La Filed Station. Cleared an overgrown area of railway land ready for a new loop line to put in. One of the houses at the back of this land had claimed it for themselves to extend their garden. They found they were using this garden extension for a sizable weed crop. Obviously, I ain't no snitch, so I kindly let the fella know his crop is about to be replaced by a railway track and that he should move it ASAP. Fifth, night shift in Kendall. Drive to an access point in the middle of nowhere. I saw loads of cars parked up and thought it was weird as there were only meant to be a couple of lads turning up, and they're always late. I get out of my car anyway to go see what's what and end up interrupting a massive dogging session. Not a conductor or my story, but it's a crazy one. I think it was Ask Reddit that had one a couple of weeks ago asking crime scene cleanup crews about the worst thing they've ever seen, and someone commented and said they had to clean up a body that had committed suicide by train. 
They looked everywhere for the head and couldn't find it, so eventually they took the body to the morgue. The examiner happens to see a wisp of hair coming out of the chest and looks closer and sees that the guy wasn't decapitated, but his head was shoved down into his body like he dove into the oncoming train. I've seen a lot of stuff in law enforcement, but that one got an audible what the fuck out of me. Not so strange but memorable, we went on school trips by train maybe a dozen or so times, mostly to museums and the like. We were always excited when we passed a certain city because, right after the station, there was a brothel right next to the tracks. The windows were facing the trains, and there were always women sitting in the windows, smoking and talking to each other in various stages of nudity. That was boring, and nobody cared anymore once students hit age 14 or so, but before that, you could see conversations stop and teens craning their necks once we left that specific train station just to get a giggle on some boobs. After that, it was back to business as usual. My grandfather on my mother's side has an eerie story about this. He drove trains back in the early 70s to the late 80s. He mostly stayed around the southeast area where we live. One night, while he was going through an intensely forested area, he noticed that in the distance it looked really bright, like daytime. It was in the middle of the night, probably 3 a.m. He describes it as if he were seeing the end of a cave. So he keeps going on, he's not about to stop an entire train. He reaches the light about two minutes after he sees it, and it's simply daytime. He checks his clock, and it still says 3 a.m. He says there were clouds in the sky and everything. He goes past a nice barn and some farmland with cows, and everything seems normal. He's blinking hard, trying to figure it out, and then he goes back into some trees, and it's night again. It never happened again. He did travel through that area again during the day, and nothing seemed out of place other than the barn seeming a bit more weathered, and there weren't any cows, but that could just be because it was a different barn, old barns are common out here. He isn't a superstitious person, he's very skeptical about anything that's not science or religion, so this story has always stuck with me. Never explained. 15-year-old railroader here. I once saw a homeless guy getting a blowjob from a toothless addict next to the tracks in Nashville. Another one I didn't personally witness but used to be a common occurrence just north of Birmingham, Alabama, was a lady who would stand next to the tracks in a trench coat with a photographer and, when the train was going by or right before, would get completely naked for a photo shoot. Another legend is the Chapel Hill Ghost Light in Chapel Hill, Tennessee. Supposedly, a long time ago, a conductor got run over by a train and decapitated. Now, after a train goes by, a mysterious light can be seen going down the tracks and even crossing from side to side. Legend has it, it is the conductor looking for his head. I've never seen it since it is only after the train goes by that it comes out. My uncle swears that he saw it multiple times back in the 70s or 80s, though, not the subway but London's Docklands Light Railway. They used to have a shutdown every August bank holiday. It gave three clear days where major works and repairs could be undertaken from the Saturday morning through the Tuesday morning. We were putting new equipment trackside, and on Saturday morning we were walking along the track, measuring distances, etc., ready to do the installation of equipment on Sunday and Monday. As we were walking, we noticed a woman lying across the tracks with her head on one rail and her feet on the other. Of note is that the DLR has a 500 volt DC third rail, which of course was off due to the shutdown. Also, the trains are automatic and have no driver most of the time. We walked towards the woman, who had seen us but didn't do anything. When we were close, we asked her what she was doing and told her she couldn't be here, it's illegal to trespass on the railway in the UK. She turned her head and said, I've had enough, the next train coming is going to end it for me, I said, well, you're going to have to wait until Tuesday, love there's no trains this weekend. She got up and stormed off, complaining about bloody trains. My husband is a train conductor, and he said crackheads periodically like to get on the tracks next to this trailer park, and occasionally they've almost gotten hit. A couple years ago, a man parked his truck on the tracks and committed suicide. It was pretty sad, he was only 27 and had just lost custody of his kids in a divorce. My husband said the impact was so hard that it cushed his truck up pretty badly, but his head and torso were still intact, and there were blood and beer cans everywhere. Other than that, he's only ever seen a bunch of wildlife. I live in a small town in Minnesota, right on the Mississippi River. Between the town and the river, there are railroad tracks that run north to south. There have been several derailments in the town south of us, one that almost wiped out my mother and her family when she was a child, but that's a different kind of worms. The north of us is pretty unspectacular until you get to the next city up. The north end of the town has a fishing spot, and there used to be a town dump in the early 1900s and possibly a hobo camp, but that's only hearsay. Anyway, on to the story. 
when I was probably 15 to 16, so about 2010 or so, I'd walk up the tracks during the day to explore the fishing spot for any lost baits, the dump for any old bottles, and generally try to forget my depression and worries about school. One day, while walking back home, I swore I heard footsteps running up behind me. It was like a tap 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 until it got right behind me. I whirled around, but nothing was there, shocker, so I kept walking. For about a quarter mile, this was the routine. Sounds of running, turning, and looking kept me walking until I got to a bridge over a creek. Once I crossed the creek, it stopped following me. Then, a year later, my buddies and I were all hanging out on a weekend. It was about midnight on Saturday when we decided to venture up the tracks at night. Nothing really out of the ordinary happened until we got up to the north end. There's a slight bend in the track, but then it's about three miles of straight track. Well, we just got to the turn when I looked back and caught something out of the corner of my eye. I get my buddy Jay to look, and he sees it too. Someone. Or something standing T-posed in the middle of the tracks. We shined our one flashlight, cheap dollar store garbage, down that way but still couldn't make it out. Then a car turning at the stop sign above shone its lights across that spot, and the figure vanished. We chalked it up to overactive imaginations and the fact that we'd seen too many scary movies. We kept on walking when Z decided to play a prank on Jay by scaring the crap out of him. While Z and I were dying laughing, Jay suddenly went, guys, guys, guys. Listen. Did you hear that? We're like, um, no? And he says I heard Mr. Archer's deep laugh and Z's mid-sounding laugh. But way back there, points down tracks towards shadow figure I heard this really high-pitched. Almost cackling. We're like, yeah, right, quit messing around, but I could tell he was really on edge about it. We went about a mile, then decided to turn around. Nothing else was happening, and we thought it was all in our heads, until we got back to that bend. As we were coming up on a dirt road that led down to the tracks, I thought I heard something behind me, almost like running on the rocks. I turn and show the shitty flashlight back to see what I can only describe as a full-bodied apparition in a dead sprint coming at me. I freaked the FK out and ran, leaving Z and J like, what the FK is his problem. They found me about 100 yards up the tracks, where I sprained my ankle and was holding a stick up as if defending myself. They got me to my feet, calmed me down, and started walking me back. Suddenly I turned around and started shouting, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, evil spirit, to leave this place and never return. I command you in the name of the Lord, God. The great I am. At this time, a barge was passing on the river and swung its searchlight across the bend. Z tells me that while I was shouting at the spirit, he saw a four-legged shadowy mass about 100 feet above the treetops, but when the searchlight moved away, it disappeared. I thought that was the end of it, but it wasn't. A few weeks passed before I went back there. Not out of fear, I just didn't have time to venture out much. I decided I was going to do some fishing in the local hole, up by that bend in the tracks. As I was casting a sloping frog into a weed bed, a train passed above me. Not unusual, since, you know. Train tracks. But after the train had passed, a good two minutes at least, suddenly, a huge rock came tumbling down the embankment and into the water and scared the crap out of me. I thought someone was messing around above me, so I yelled out, hey, watch it. To no response. I walked over and peeked up, but no one was there. I walked over to where the rock tumbled down and saw something that made my blood run cold. Divot in the embankment. That rock, about the size of a basketball, had been halfway in the ground and had been lifted out of its hole. I grabbed my gear and hightailed it out of there. Of course, I've been back since then, and nothing out of the ordinary has happened, aside from the occasional feeling of being watched. Overactive imagination of a bunch of adolescent teens? The spirit of a homeless man hit by a trained demon? Angel? I'll let you decide. I, for one, am convinced of two things. One, there's no such thing as the spirits of dead relatives, they are either angels from the Lord or demons. Two, there's no such thing as coincidences. Something was there, and now it's not. A fun side story that I'm not sure if it's related to, Z and I were walking the tracks a few years after graduation, so about 2016 to 2017. I was fishing, and he wandered down the tracks from me. I decided to go collect him since he was obviously bored, so I packed up and walked after him. As I approach, I see two men standing on the tracks and talking among themselves while pointing down to this wooded beach below the train bridge. I wonder what they're pointing at, and it's Z. As I get closer, I look behind me briefly so it doesn't seem like I'm staring at them while walking at them. I glanced away for maybe 10 seconds, and when I look back, they're both gone. I don't mean walking down the tracks, I don't mean running down the opposite embankment to the road, I mean just going. 
keep in mind that it's pretty open at this point, so I could see the tracks and road really well, and there was no one in sight. Z comes up, and I ask if he saw the men. He says he did not, but as he's answering, I see one of them walking casually up the road away from us. I point him out to Z, who just shrugs and is like, so what? What are you going to do? Go after him. I'm like, nah, forget it. And we just left.